decided to go to Clive because we want to be a little bit incognito today with the game Incognita. So we're here with James. Uh, you're the developer on Incognita. Tell us a little bit about the game. Yeah, so Incognita is a turn-based tactical espionage game. Um, the idea is that we want to take the stuff that makes turn-based games really good, and we want to add a layer of espionage onto that. So instead of going full combat direction, we want to give the player a lot of options, make combat an option, but not the best option always. So you can sneak around, you can loot stuff. The idea of the game is that it's mostly a game about information rather than combat. Uh, what games did you, uh, you said you drew from different you know, games, the best things. What games uh, really influenced this? Did you play, um, what was that one, uh, Frozen Synapse or anything like that? Yeah, so we played Frozen Synapse. That's, a, that's an influence, definitely. And you can see kind of some of the art style looks similar to Frozen Synapse in certain ways. Um, the, uh, the, the game that's influenced most here probably is XCOM, for sure. Um, and then FTL a little bit as well. Uh, XCOM because we want to get the, uh, that chunky turn-based strategy from there, right? The turn-based tactics in XCOM. We want to take them in a totally different direction. Um, and the, uh, the other stuff from FTL, we've got sort of procedural gameplay. It's quite difficult, like FTL. So those are sort of some of our influences that we, uh, we're kind of taking and building off of. Now you just said like all the games that I hear the most about on our website, so I think everybody out there is going to be really happy about that. Um, how about like more fantasy style? Did you guys get anything from like Heroes of Might and Magic or anything like that? So I, I've played a lot of Heroes of Might and Magic. Uh, Heroes of Might and Magic 3 is actually one of my favorite games of all time. Um, so yeah, there, there's a little bit of that in there, but it's not it's not a whole lot. It's mostly mostly the XCOM and FTL influences and, and some other stuff along the way. You know, certain other games that are procedural and permadeath, like uh, you know, Binding of Isaac is like that and other yeah. games like that. All right, I got something for you. Um, you may have to think for a second, but what's the most ridiculous scenario in game that you've ever come across, and uh, what did you do to beat it? Okay, so there's one scenario where you have to capture a sharpshooter that's in in like a set of lasers, and there are a couple guards guarding him. So I, I ran up to go take out the guards, and um, I took out one guard, and then another guard heard that, came through the door, and like shot me, and that gunshot all sound also created a noise that another guard back behind me heard, so now I was like surrounded by four guards. So eventually, I basically, the only strategy in that case is um, we have multiple ways of killing guards, so one way is to actually kill them, and that takes yeah. care of them for the entire turn. Um, another way is you can knock them out, and that, that'll knock them out for a couple turns, but then they'll get back up and you have to deal with them again. So it's kind of a trade-off. Killing them uses ammo and, uh, and also raises the alarm a little bit. So I, I had to knock them all out because it was the only way to, to take them out that turn. And eventually, I knocked four guards out. They were going to get up next turn. I ran through the door to the side, and I closed the door behind me and just, like, bolted from the level. So there's just four guards, like, waking up in that room. That's basically, like, one of the major things you're going to do. All right, so it sounds like stealth is involved. Yeah. Um, is, what, what kind of stealth system do you have implemented? Sure, so we have a lot of... A lot of the espionage in the game right now is... Um, sort of more uh, about information and what you know about the level. So if I were smarter in that situation I described to you, I would have looked around the room a little bit more, noticed that there was a guard off to the side, wouldn't have made a noise that would have attracted him. Noticed there was a guard behind me, wouldn't have made a noise that would have attracted him. So it's more about the range of the noise you're making, what position you're in, how quickly you're moving so you can run or you can sneak. Um, there's no, uh, there's no other sort of stealth system in there now where there's like light or anything. There's nothing like that right now. It's mostly about uh, playing smart and tactically with, uh, with what, how guards can see their like range of vision. So our release date 2014, we have an alpha coming up in about a month and that's gonna be on Steam Early Access. Uh, so we're gonna include people like really early on in the development process. And you can go on to our forums, forums.clayentertainment.com. That's where you'll like figure out all the information that, that's coming up with that. Uh, for platforms, we have a uh, PC is the only confirmed platform right now. We're always looking into other platforms. Though. Good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let's talk a little bit about you now. So before you did this, um, what were you doing? Uh, so I was actually a student before this in a game design program at a place called Hampshire College. Um, and then after that, I went and worked at a company called uh, Loot Drop for about a year. Um, and we were doing Facebook games. So we actually had a similar game. We did a Facebook uh, Ghost Recon game. And some of that is like some of the tactical stuff from that is, uh, is interesting going into this game. This game is definitely not a Facebook game, though. Yeah. Um, and then I came to work at Clay, and now I'm uh, one of the two technical designers on uh, Incognito. All right, so now you've been at Clay. Um, there's a lot of aspiring game, dev game developers and also some actually working game developers on our forum. What's the most frustrating or ridiculous thing that happened uh, while working on this game? For a while, just the, the massive amount of interfaces we've had have been totally ridiculous. Iterating on the interface over and over again to, to try to get it to something. When you make a turn-based tactical game, the, iter the, the interface is actually one of the most difficult parts. You've got to fit all this information on the screen and still make it usable. Yeah. Like a real-time game, you can kind of, uh, you don't have to have that many systems in order to make it in a, interesting. Um, so in a turn-based game, we've had iterations. We have one interface going, a second interface coming up. I was like programming a third interface at the same time, and they were all existing in the dev build at once. 
So it was just like, yeah, it kind of got crazy at certain points. All right, so favorite uh, PC game of all time? Yeah, sure. Favorite PC game of all time? It's got to be StarCraft. All right, why? Why StarCraft? StarCraft Brood War. I don't know. As a kid, I was really into StarCraft. I love the asymmetry is, as a designer. One of the most beautiful things in the world is the way that, you know, previous RTSs, I mean, there were asymmetrical RTSs before, but StarCraft for me was the one that really perfected it, and the level of asymmetry they achieved in that game was just so incredible. Like, just every every race is so different, and yet it's still balanced. I, I just love that as a designer. All right, I think it's about time to uh, rip these guys off the machine GTA style and play this. All right, thanks a lot, man. All right, thank you, man. Check, check. I like, I like bacon. Not really. I don't like bacon. I just saw it on the internet and I feel like I need to be included in that group that likes bacon so I can be accepted on the internet.